It's now May 7th, 2020, and time for me to leave Utah and seek a job for the summer in the mountains of Colorado. So I've um, seen this Slot Canyon many times, and I pulled up this time, and here is somebody I actually know. He's in his van over there. His name's Kyle. Um, so we've decided to go and see if we can find a way down there together. Uh, gosh, if I'd have known, I would have brought my flashlight down too. Do you have a, a flashlight in your camera? I do. On my phone, yeah. Oh, it's not too bad. Let's no. go through. <laughs> If you get up there, you can take a look over and see if it's working. <laughs> Me trying. <laughs> go, go and check it out up ahead. This is one where it should be easier to come down than get up, I think. I'll fall down this thing. <laughs> oh, the easy part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a pleasant little roadside interaction with Kyle. After leaving the Henry Mountains, I spent a night in Hanksville, and then a night in the San Rafael Swell, where apparently camping restrictions had finally been lifted, because all along Temple Mountain Road, campers had claimed every spot imaginable, and sadly even created new ones. After being stuck at home for weeks on end, I couldn't blame them for escaping the city en masse. That person doesn't know the meaning of respect. He just flew right by me so fast, throwing rocks up. It is common courtesy to slow down a little bit when you pass somebody on one of these dirt roads. I'm at the Spotted Wolf Overlook which is a viewpoint at the um, top of the San Rafael Swell where I-70 cuts through the swell. It's a Monday and this is Interstate 70. And this is the swell from the bottom. Some of you might recognize it from my travels when I started out last year. I've come full circle. Over on the right there, you'll see um, these drilling wells. I don't know what they're drilling for. I am ignorant there, but uh, these have been about every one-tenth of a mile since uh, I left the National Forest a few miles back. But just while I've been talking to you, we passed two of them. 
another one coming up. Look at this, right here. This dinosaur in Vernal, Utah isn't taking any chances. It doesn't want a second round of extinction. See, this is all privately owned ranch land. There is no camping Oops, out here. Probably as far as the eye can see. Okay, so um, this is why I don't do state parks. They want $9 to en enter and then they want 27 or $30 to camp for the night. And there is no first come, first serve. You have to call ahead and make a reservation. Even though the state park is completely empty and there is not a single person camping here. Okay, while I was uh, on the way through Hayden, I decided to check out their fairgrounds. Um, they want $22 for a primitive camping site here. $43 for a hookup. <laughs> Uh, I always thought of, like, I don't know, fairgrounds, again, as a place that was affordable. This is Rabbit Ears Pass. Comes out of Steamboat Springs. Studley uh, is kind of old, so I take it slow with him on these long uphill mountain passes. Goodness, that wind is strong. Oh, ah, oh, well, welcome back to Colorado. But I could tell you that cool air feels nice. Okay, I'm here. It's windy. It's cold, but look at my view.
The next day, I continued along Highway 14 to Walden and then over Cameron Pass. If I had known that this area was going to be consumed by the flames of the Cameron Peak Fire in just a few months, a wildfire that became the largest in Colorado history, perhaps I would have lingered longer. But on this day, I was just ready to get back to my friends in Essos Park and my beloved Rocky Mountain National Park. Although this area was consumed by flames, I assure you that at some point in the future it will regenerate and be beautiful again. This last stretch of my journey for the winter 2019 into 2020 say from Hanksville, Utah to Estes Park, Colorado, could have been driven in one long day. However, my philosophy on travel is to enjoy the journey to the fullest. I stop often and sit and enjoy the view, the sound of water, the birds, and unique sense of each stop. I take the time to enjoy as many places between my starting point and destination as possible if I even have a destination. If it can be driven in a day, I may take five days and truly embrace all those places between the others. And I am often delighted by the hidden secrets I stumble upon. This wisdom comes from a solo female nomad of 15 years. Perhaps traveling to clock up miles or to get a passport stamp from every national park in the United States is perfect for you. But as a seasoned nomad, I've learned to slow down and enjoy the journey. It is a very relaxed way to travel, and I hope that you will continue to experience my travels with me. On this day, I got on with the journey, because after seven months of travel, <laughs> I was looking forward to working for the summer and hiking in the mountains of Colorado. This video is the last in my winter series in my 15th year as a nomad, but it is not the end of year 15. My nomadic year starts in October, so there is still an entire summer ahead, and what a summer it was. I hope you'll sign up and ring that bell so you don't miss any episodes. I look forward to sharing my summer job with you as a nomad for nature and many more things in the summer of 2020. Oh, I'm back in my beloved mountains. Sign says, masks are required in all businesses and outdoors. Plus outdoors downtown, masks are required.